Okay, so today I will be analysing the poem Waterfall by Loris Dorothy Edmund. So first, let's um, talk a little bit about the poet. So first of all, she postponed her own creative studies in Wellington, New Zealand, to accompany her husband as he embarked on his own career as a headmaster. Um, she had several affairs throughout her life, so this is indicative of um, tension between the couple, which is mirrored in the poem, as we see in certain parts of the poem, how the speaker and her partner um, also seem to have a tension throughout their relationship. Um, she was 51 before her first collection of poetry was published, so it could be said that she was um, late in her poetic calling. So we do get the sense here that the poet of um, Waterfall had quite a few issues with time and delay, and um, what, this is probably the main reason why time is such a big theme, um, a, a large element in this poem. So the deep meaning. Um, so time is always in control. Um, the passing of time enhances and distorts memory. It strengthens and erodes the bonds between one person and another. It transforms the shape of love in the most unexpected ways. So um, basically there is nothing that we can do to stop the flow of time. Not even love can overpower it as seen in the um, poem as the speaker and the love she shares with her partner is unable to stop the force that is time. Ultimately, every happy moment we have ever had or will ever have in our lives is in fact quite sad because it is destined to come to an end due to the power of time. And this is something that um, the poet is trying to show us here. Okay, so this is the first stanza of the four stanza long poem. I do not ask for, you, for youth, nor for delay, in the rising of time's irreversible river that takes the jeweled arc of the waterfall in which I glimpse, minute by glinting minute, all that I have and all I am always losing, as sunlight lights each drop, fast, fast falling. So we have the use of enjambment, which evokes the feeling of water flowing downwards through the waterfall. Um, we also have repetition of sunlight lights, fast, fast. Um, and this adds to this, to the effect of um, water flowing downwards. And it also mirrors the speed of the water droplets and the way in which they come together and splash against the rocks at the bottom. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of imagery in this structure. So then we have the um, the words at the end of um, the last few lines of this stanza. Um, they end in an unstressed syllable. So river, waterfall, minute, losing, falling. And the effect of this is um, it creates the effect of falling rhythm um, and it also recreates the movement of the water being pulled downwards. And then the last part of the stanza, drop, fast, fast, falling, um, those are four consecutive, we have four consecutive stressed beats in drop, fast, fast, falling. So because this is placed at the end of the stanza, it creates the sense of the downward motion of the water, um, which becomes more and more irresistible. So it's, um, as our time comes to an end, as we are being dragged down to the dark pool below, that dark pool is becoming more and more irresistible um, as we are being pushed towards it by the force of time. Um, and then we have the use of the metaphor, irreversible river, which is a metaphor for time. So ultimately, you can only go in one direction. There is no turning back. It is irreversible. Life is irreversible. Um, the speaker seems to be in acceptance of the passing of time. It is clear that she is unwilling to devalue the precious moments of her life 
and this is conveyed through the use of negation. Um, I do not ask for youth nor for delay. Um, so it this shows that she doesn't want to diminish the precious moments of her life by trying to hold on to them too tightly. Um, she's willing to let go. Right, then we have the second stanza of the poem. I do not dream that you, young again, might come to me darkly in love's green darkness, where the dust of the bracken spices the air. Moss, crushed, gives out an astringent sweetness, and water holds our reflections, motionless, as if forever. So, the second stanza of the poem becomes intensely personal, and this is seen through the uh, direct address, you. Um, it is possible that the you she is referring to here is one of her lovers. As um, I said before, the poet had many affairs. But um, I think it's more about, this poem is more about lifelong companionship. So um, I would lean towards the fact that she's referring to the passion she shared with her husband at the beginning of their relationship if we are assuming that um, the speaker and the poet are um, the same. Um, we have quite an erotic undertone if, uh, if when it says come to me, which uh, this could be read romantically. And this um, sense of sexuality and lust is also seen in Bracken Spices. So um, the spices in the air could be referring to something sexual, indicating the physical passion that the couple had for each other when they were younger. And then we have moss crushed, which creates the image in our mind of two people using the moss as a blanket to lie down on. So in this stanza, um, we see a lot of... Um, imagery of their the passion, the lust they shared with each other. And this is just one chapter, um, a, f a couple of memories um, that have just been uh, left behind by time. Um, and then we also have the use of the oxymoron, astringent sweetness, which shows that these happy, passionate memories are in fact bittersweet as I said before, because they are destined to come to an end. And then we also have uh, the use of seizure after motionless, which shows that um, it creates a sudden pause, which contrasts to the steady, consistent flow, which has been present in, the, in a large part of the poem. So we see that her love for her partner at this point was so powerful it was able to overpower time for a fraction of a second and this shows that um, her memories of their time together will never be erased by time and that these memories are in fact timeless however we are kind of brought back to reality we are reminded by the poet um, when the speaker says as if forever that um, it is not that time is in fact very powerful and that um, these motionless reflections, these motionless memories, are, they're just reflections in the water, they're simply illusions and that uh, time is in fact the greatest, most consistent force of them all. So we are sort of um, brought back to reality here. Um, and then we have in this, we have the third stanza of the poem. It is enough now to come into a room and find the kindness we have for each other, calling it love in eyes that are shrewd but trustful still, face chastened by years of careful judgment, to sit in the afternoons in, the afternoons, in mild conversations without nostalgia. So the time adverbial now uh, comes makes us come back to the present. Um, she admits that time changes love, 
much like a waterfall erodes a rock face. So she's looking back at her life and she is um, sort of acknowledging the fact that time has changed her. It has changed her relationship with her loved one. And then there is also a change in diction between the second and third stanza of the poem. Um, the words become simpler and more restrained, which mirrors the how they felt in their relationship through the passing of time. So um, this is seen in uh, words like enough, um, mild conversation and sit and things like that. Um, the speaker also alludes to tension, and this is seen in the use of um, the words careful, judgment, and shrewd. And this could be a reference to what was discussed earlier about Edmund's uh, past affairs and the distance that had grown between her and her husband. Um, so this could be the reason as to why Edmund doesn't seem to mind um, uh, the in the calmer present day, simply sitting down together in the afternoon with mild conversation. Because even though it may not be love, it is companionship. And this is something that is cherished by the couple. Um, and then the feeling of contentment is also seen in the last line when it says at the end, without nostalgia. So she is happy to indulge on some occasions on a past romantic memory, but they are happy together in the present moment and do not wish to return to the past, to dwell on that nostalgia. Um, so in this stanza, it could be argued that the theme of water in the poem could be a reference to the phrase water under the bridge, as if both husband and the wife prefer to leave their trouble behind them in the past where they belong. Um, and then we have the last stanza of the poem. But when you leave me with your jauntiness sinewed by resolution more than strength, suddenly then I love you with a quick intensity, remembering that water, however luminous and grand, falls fast and only wants to the dark pool below. So um, the poem changes course all of a sudden in the last stanza. Um, we saw how stanza two argued that we can oppose the passing of time by holding on to our timeless memories. And stanza three argued that um, this can be achieved by focusing on the present rather than dwelling on the past and on nostalgia. Um, but then in this stanza, the speaker seems to acknowledge the fact that time is all powerful and there's nothing we can do to, um, to stop it. So the power of time is reasserted through the use of the words suddenly, only once, fast and quick and the sudden reversal of the speaker's thoughts on time is marked by the discourse marker but at the beginning of the stanza. Um, the dark pool which is referred to at the end of the stanza is a metaphor for death and the end of the love and companionship between the speaker and her partner. It is only when her partner is about to leave her that she loves him the most, as seen in Suddenly Then I Love You With a Quick Intensity. So the fear of losing him is what makes her so desperate to cling on to him. So the overall message of um, the poem is to show that no matter how the relationship was, with its highs and its lows, it will never be able to overpower time. Time is always in control and um, nothing lasts forever. Okay, so here, here are some examples of topic areas I would use um, if doing an um, essay on this uh, poem. So the first topic area 
I would focus on is how the beginning of the relationship um, between the speaker and her partner was one filled with passion and lust, as seen in the second stanza. Um, and I would also focus on the fact that her memories of this chapter of her life are timeless. So she wasn't in full acknowledgement um, towards the beginning of the poem that time is all powerful and she kind of um, had this sense, this uh, feeling that time could be stopped with her memories, which to her were uh, were timeless. And then the second stanza would, I mean, the second topic area would be how the passion has faded away and the couple are left with feelings of contentment. They enjoy each other's company and do not dwell on the past. They don't dwell on the on any nostalgia. So this again shows how she isn't in full acknowledgement about time being um, a, the, a powerful force. And she's just saying that um, the power of time can be diminished by simply focusing on the present um and then the last topic area would be how all of a sudden we see a shift as the speaker realizes that time is in fact a powerful force and nothing can overpower it she is full of love for her partner as she acknowledges that time is going to cause them to separate in death and um thus she suddenly loves him with a quick intensity as seen in the fourth stanza of the poem. And I would also focus on um, time being all powerful, um, which is evident in the first stanza of the poem. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Hope that was helpful.